right, let's go ahead. Do we have a motion to approve the July 28th, 2020 minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. All right, do we have any agenda revisions or motions to direct the city manager to add agenda items? Mayor Bagley. Yeah, there are two uh, two items. Uh, the short-term rental ordinance and and what and whatever we see back now in terms of the uh, the sense that staff made out of out of the, the direction we gave. Um, I, I think we need to, my view, and I've heard from residents that we need to take a look at our ADU ordinance um, on the heels of that, uh, especially if we're going to expect to see more ADUs used as short-term rentals. Um, so I'd like to move that um, the, the staff find a time on the agenda on the heels of the, the update of the short-term rental ordinance that we take a look soon at the ADU ordinance. Second. We should probably act before they start throwing them up. So um, it's it's urgent. Yeah, Johnny's so, on. So let me get with her tomorrow. All right, great. Um, I'm going to put it on, but let's go ahead and take the vote since there's a motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. Um, but a year ago, we authorized the city manager to engage a a consultant to do an external evaluation of the rewind program. Um, so what I'd like to know if other council members share any curiosity in knowing what, what we learned, not what the, the, not the recommendations and the findings or the details of the report, just what staff learned and how we'll use what we learned to kind of continue to improve what we do with Rewind and, and the relationship with uh, uh, the community justice, with restorative justice and community justice partnership. Um, there's a motion on the table. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, uh, it passes unanimously. Um, I'm gonna start off with um, Susan Motika from Boulder County Health. Take it away. Thank you, Harold. Thank you. I am the Strategic Initiatives and Policy Director at Boulder County Public Health and Jeff Zayak, our director, was sorry he could not be here tonight. So an update on the state mask order. Um, as you may know, I'm sure you get feedback on this, the state mask order has been um, interpreted to require that people wear masks in cubicles, indoors, in offices that don't have closed doors. Uh, the state's mask order is due to expire on August 15th. Assume this order gets extended. That's what we're thinking from Governor Polis. So I would say look for an update from us early in the week. We're expecting an answer on, uh, before, on or before August 15th, and then perhaps some um, clarifying information uh, shortly thereafter. So I wanted to let you know, we've been doing our Sentinel survey. This is where we send out a team of people to monitor masks all over the county. We go to sites all over the county and we're seeing 95% compliance in those places. Okay, so this is our cumulative cases and information about our cumulative cases. We are now lower than all but Broomfield and Douglas County. Um, so this is our five-day rolling on COVID tests. And again, we see that the percent on positivity has remained steady and is heading downward. Next. So this is showing our racial ethnic breakdown. And in the past uh, 10 days, we're seeing 51% of our cases with a known race and ethnicity being Hispanic, Latin, X. The most significant age groups are elders for hospitalizations and deaths. So these are uh, key COVID data resources that help direct you directly to our webpage, to the exact um, pages and sources that are dealing with illness and recovery, the summary dashboard, hospital resource dashboard, and the CDPHE COVID data. There's three things that they're really hitting on, wearing mm -hmm. masks, socially distancing, and washing your hands. Mm -hmm. And the data is now really starting to show that if, if we do those three things, those are really powerful. What was our area of non-attainment? 
it was the stable or declining COVID-19 hospitalizations. There's an item today in terms of the work that we're gonna do with um, CSU. Um, and, and I've asked Roberto to talk to council about this. Um, Roberto, take it away. Good evening. I'm Roberto Luna, Water Quality uh, Laboratory Supervisor. Uh, um, with the uh, Business Environmental Services and the Public Works and Natural Resources Department. I'll be presenting information on an ongoing project for monitoring the COVID virus in wastewater. The Netherlands uh, uh, research indicated that you could detect the virus days prior to the first clinically confirmed case of COVID-19. We were selected uh, for the second round of testing. Biobot really experienced a tremendous increase in its demand, in the demand for its services. The, um, the next thing I wanted to update you all on, and this is um, actually really good news, uh, but as you all know, the council uh, voted uh, to, to do the tokens for the um, food chip for the food program for the $25. Um, we actually partnered with a number of groups to get this done. So the Chamber of Commerce um, operate, um, agreed to manage the program. We worked with the Tinker Mill and they created 200 of those $25 tokens. We then gave those out to the folks that were in the, the free meal program. But the groups that we work with on a normal basis um, that we assist in, um, with providing food the good news is um, we're also partnered with about 50 local restaurants and they're starting to report back that they're actually seeing those tokens come into their restaurants. Um, they're really excited about participating in it. We recently were um, contacted by two apartment complexes um, and they indicated that they wanted to figure out how they could purchase those tokens so that they could give them to their residents. And I think that's really the positive. We really like this idea that the council developed and implemented, and we want to be part of it. So I wanted to share that with you all. All right, great. Let's move on to the consent agenda, an introduction and reading by title, the first reading of ordinances. Can you go ahead and read that for us, Don? I can, Mayor. I'll need lots of breath. It's a long one tonight. It is. <laughs> Ordinance item 9A is ordinance 2020-30, a bill for an ordinance making additional appropriations for expenses and liabilities of the city of Longmont for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2020, public hearing and second reading scheduled for August 25th, 2020. 9B is ordinance 2020-31, a bill for an ordinance amending titles 4.04, 4.05, and 6.08 of the Longmont Municipal Code on Sales and Use Tax, Lodgers tax and retail business licenses and creating a new code section 4.04.105 for the purpose of enacting the Colorado Municipal League's model ordinance on economic nexus and marketplace facilitators for self-collecting home rule municipalities as part of a statewide sales tax simplification effort. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for August 25th, 2020. 9C is ordinance 2020-32, a bill for an ordinance amending title 6.08 of the Longmont Municipal Code on retail business license. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for August 25th, 2020. 9D is ordinance 2020-33, a bill for an ordinance submitting to the registered electors of the city of Longmont, Colorado at a special municipal election to be held on November 3rd, 2020, an amendment to the city of Longmont home rule charter to allow for the lease of city property for up to 30 years. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for August 25th, 2020. 9E is resolution 2020-69, a resolution of the Longmont City Council calling a special municipal election to be held Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020, concerning issuing bonds payable from the city's water utilities enterprise revenues to finance water capital projects and an amendment to the City of Longmont Home Rule Charter to allow for leases of city property for up to 30 years. 9F is Resolution 2020-70, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the city and Boulder County for the conduct and administration of the 2020 general election to be held November 3rd, 2020. 9G is Resolution 2020-71, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the city and Weld County for the conduct and co coordination of the November 3rd, 2020 election. 
9H is resolution 2020-72, a resolution of the Longmont City Council submitting a ballot question to the registered electors of the City of Longmont, Colorado at a special municipal election to be held November 3rd, 2020, concerning issuing bonds payable from the city's water utility enterprise revenues to finance water capital projects. 9I is resolution 2020-73, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the amendment to an intergovernmental agreement between the City of Longmont and Colorado Department of Human Services Office of Behavioral Health for a grant to support the Longmont Public Safety Lead Program. 9J, Resolution 2020-74, Resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the amendment to intergovernmental agreement between the City of Longmont and Colorado Department of Human Services Office of Behavioral Health for a grant to support the Longmont Public Safety Crisis Outreach Response and Engagement Team, core team. 9K, Resolution 2020-75, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the City of Longmont and the Colorado Department of Public Safety for the Emergency Management Performance Grant. 9L is Resolution 2020-76, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the Project Partnership Intergovernmental Agreement between the City of Longmont and Department of the Army for the St. Vrain Creek Flood Risk Management Project under Section 205. 9M is Resolution 2020-77, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the First Amendment to the Fiber Use License Intergovernmental Agreement between the City of Longmont and Platte River Power Authority. 9N is Resolution 2020-78, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving a voluntary alternative agreement for the spoke apartments as satisfaction of the city's inclusionary housing requirements. And 9O is approved loan term extension request from the Longmont Housing Development Corporation on their Hover Crossing land purchase loan. Phew. Staff would like to remove 9N for the for a presentation. Okay, we can do that, that's fine. Uh, Dr. Waters? Uh, uh, can we remove item uh, 9O uh, as well? I, I have a question about the length of that extension. I think there were a couple of options. So. All right, all in favor, sir, aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. Mayor, so it does look like we displayed an incorrect meeting ID, and that's why they weren't able to join us. Okay, the then, then I'm going to go ahead. Let's go ahead and go back. I'm going to open up. Uh, first call, public invited to be heard. Uh, Mayor and members of the City Council, I wish to speak to the bill amending Chapter 4.10 of the Longmont Municipal Code on Special Districts, Policies, and Procedures. I ask you to vote yes on this bill. I understand that at the upcoming August 25th Council meeting, you will be deciding on whether or not to renew the contract with Detlev Helmig. This monitoring has been never really been more important as you know our air quality has been showing spikes in dangerous ozone levels triggered by pollutants such as VOCs as well as other compounds extremely destructive to human health. I urge you to vote to renew the contract with him at the August 25th council meeting to continue the critical important monitoring of our air quality. With the light going in up on pace and South Kaufman, we're sitting a lot, seeing a lot of traffic that's coming through. And if, if the council could look at that for us, please. Um, I'm here, council, and uh, Karen Roney and uh, Nancy Kerr to ask you to look at um, in uh, increasing the access to the library. I think there are plenty of ways that our library can still prioritize safety and expand access for more people, just like our private retailers have had to do. Please bring to a vote to show that we would no longer have special residential uh, metro districts in our community. Uh, for the most part, these uh, special districts have not been at advantage. I think our community would be better without special metro districts. I would like the city to put in a citywide ban on masks. I am doing my part, and I do not think the council has gotten tough enough on gatherings and masking, etc. Someone who talked about the library, I do not think we should put the librarians at risk because of children. I mean, they need to be educated, but there are other ways to get the book. And it's 
not the librarians that set the rules for the library, it's the council. City council members, please restore Longmont's ban on residential metro districts. Thank you very much for your time this evening. I'm more than happy to an answer any questions you might have. I'm speaking once again tonight regarding the traffic signal being placed at the intersection of Pike Road and South Coffin Street. I, along with many residents along South Coffin Street, have concerns about the placement of this signal. Thank you for your time. And I'm also against the, uh, <laughs> the district. I don't like that idea at all. I am calling regarding the issue of the five foot setback and I thank Councilman Waters and Mayor Bagley for bringing back the issue of the five foot setback specifically related to the ADU, which is an accessory dwelling unit. So if you would please urgently consider this, I would appreciate it. Thank you for your time and for all your hard work. Now let's move on to ordinances on second reading and public hearings on any matter. Um, let's go ahead with uh, or, uh, item 10A, ordinance 2020-11, a bill for an ordinance amending chapter 4.10 of the Longmont Municipal Code on special districts, districts, policies, and procedures. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, Aaron Rodriguez, we're gonna go with you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak real quick on what has unfortunately become somewhat of a wedge issue for city council. Don't know if that's so much the case for our residents of Longmont. Anyway, I would just at this time like to give a brief statement and uh, followed by a motion on the issue. I, I just am not convinced at this time that there's any but any way to move any of the our, our council members, my fellow colleagues, off of their particular viewpoints concerning metro districts. Councilmember Martin is probably correct that both the allowance for metro districts as it stands, as well as what we're about to likely vote on are probably both outdated once we come through this pandemic and that we should just come up with some closure on the issue until potentially another council decides to bring it back up again. With that, I move to approve ordinance 2011. Thank you. Second. I, I, I'm curious why we didn't have a public hearing on this. Wasn't this a public hearing? You know what? You were absolutely right, Dr. Waters. I was so anxious to avoid the vitriol and the discontent that I forgot. So we're going to actually go ahead and open it up for public hearing at this time. And if there's... This is Pat Davis, 1709 Harvard. I'm calling in to support the vote of Council Members Rodriguez, Peck, Hidalgo, Faring, and Christensen. Okay. So um, I'm not sure anyway, what else I can say except I support uh, those members who voted uh, yes. So uh, thank you very much. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing at this time. And then there was, there was a, we have to re-vote on the matter. So let's go ahead and vote. Let's go ahead and vote the motion uh, submitted uh, by uh, Councilor Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez was uh, a motion to pass ordinance 2020-11 as written, a bill for an ordinance amending chapters 4.10, the Long Municipal Code on Special Districts Policies and Procedures. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 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 All right. So the motion carries five to two with council members Martin and Waters uh, against. All right, let's move on. All right, let's move on to ordinance 2020-29, a bill for an ordinance amending chapter 14.52, section 14.52.030 of the Longmont Municipal Code on compensation for disposition of open space property. Um, let's go ahead and open the public hearing. All right, let's go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, let's go ahead, do we have a vote from or a motion from council? I move uh, approval of ordinance 2020-29. I'll second. All right, there's a motion. Um, all in favor of passing ordinance 2020-29, say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the motion passes unanimously. All right. All right, um, let's move on to item N on the consent agenda. Uh, city staff has a presentation. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is Kathy Fedler with the, uh, the Housing and Community Investment Division. So this is um, for the Spoke Apartments, which is on um, 518 Kaufman. 
It is um, the developer is the Boulder County Housing Authority. Um, and this is the voluntary alternative agreement um, in order uh, to allow them to build affordable rental homes on site. Um, this just shows the, um, the layout and the proposed look of the building. Um, this property is um, falls under the density cap. Uh, so again, 73 affordable homes, 23 of those homes are about 31% are affordable at or below 50% of their immediate income. 50 homes or 68% are affordable at or below 60% of the area median income. So this does address council work plans goal um, B1.1, having a diverse housing stock with higher densities, access to high quality public transportation, food and jobs. I'm gonna go actually go ahead and move uh, resolution 2020-78, a resolution of Longmont City Council approving a voluntary alternative agreement to bespoke apartments and satisfaction the city's inclusionary housing requirements. Second. All right, seeing no further debate, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. Unanimously. Dr. Waters, let's turn the time over to you for O of the consent agenda. Thanks, uh, Mayor Bagley. So I'll move. Uh, item 8-0 uh, with the three-year extension. Second. I think it was 9-0. Is that what you meant? I'm sorry, 9-0, yeah. Right, approve the loan term extension request for the Longmont Housing Department Corporation on their Hover Crossing land purchase loan for uh, for three years specifically. Correct. And there was a second by Council Member Martin. All right, so you know for the discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the motion passes unanimously. Um, general business, Housing and Human Services Advisory Board recommendations for second quarter 2020 affordable housing funding. Staff has a presentation, I believe. This is our second quarter um, affordable housing funding application cycle that we went out. This is a little bit of background just to ground us again. Um, so what we've allocated so far in affordable housing funding is 1.425. On the CDBG funding available, that was all allocated in 2020 um, or in early 2020. Um, <clears throat> on the home funding, um, if you remember, we allocated our entire um, 2021 um, set aside for Longmont. Um, that is the year that we would get um, the home consortium funding. All right, so we did take applications um, for affordable housing funds um, in the April 20th to May 20, 22nd timeframe. So the funding recommendation from the Housing and Human Services Advisory Board and the Technical Review Group is to provide $120,000 grant so there was a lot of discussion um, as the Housing Advisory Board and the Technical Review Group were considering this project. All right. Thank you very much for your presentation. We really appreciate it. We accept, I right. move that we accept the, the recommendation of uh, funding Habitat. And that's been seconded by Councilman Redoggle Faring. Councilman. All right. Well, we've got a motion on the table. And the motion was to uh, accept the Housing and Human Services Advisory Board recommendation for second quarter 2020 affordable housing funding. So let's go ahead and vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. All right, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. All right, Councilman Martin. I just would like to say something about the traffic light at uh, um, Pike and Kaufman, uh, which is that the number of people who demanded that traffic light was not a vocal few. It was many people who came to public invited to be heard um, for weeks on end to try to defend the character of their neighborhood. So I just want to remind the public 
that if you really have the expectation that nothing ever changes in your neighborhood, that you need to take the opportunity um, of public engagement that the city of Longmont offers you because uh, we work really hard at it and not everyone can always agree, but if we don't hear from you in time, you may not like the result. All right, thanks everybody, have a good night. Good night. We're adjourned.